I know. So we're like, hey, wake up. That's right. P, V, and J. Okay, so here's my favorite thing. Last thing we need to go over, all right? Now, we're talking about vectors, and we're talking about component form of vectors, right? So if we have the component form of vector, we know it's going to have be V1, comma, V2, right? That's your component form of vector. Then the next thing we said was, If we had the magnitude of our component vector was equal to 1, then we had a lovely, nice little unit vector, right? OK. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to talk a little bit about um, some special unit vectors that I wanted to uh, go over with you guys. So we know a vector equals v1 and v2. But so we know that a unit vector, has, the magnitude has to equal 1. Well, what if we have our two unit vectors are on our x and y axes, where I have this vector is 1, 0, and this one is at 0, 1. All right. Now, these are what we call, I call my little special vectors. We call them my p, b, and j. I don't know why I call them the p, b, and j. Please turn your TV set to channel 6 for the Mustang News. We call this j. All right. And I call this one PB, the reason why, because it's an I. But notice how I wrote my I. Wait, how does PB it has nothing to do with it. I just like this J, and then rather than the I, I just like to sometimes call it PB. Wait. You know you get like random nicknames that don't really make sense? I just like to call it PB and J. Okay? Now, here's the thing that I want you guys to notice. The reason why I go with PB I mean, I, I'm going to use I. I'm just making, making fun of the situation. But just notice how my eyes are a little bit different, right? You guys remember making fun of You remember? Right. These are totally different eyes. And there's a reason why I wrote my eye like this before. You're like, why can't you write eyes? Why do they have the little tail? Because we need to make sure we're distinguishing our different eyes, all right? So just be very careful with this. This is I. This I represents the unit vector. This i represents a complex, imaginary portion of a complex number. These are, we've already talked about these. These are not the same. So we're going to have i's are going to represent different parts. This i just represents a unit vector on our x axis. Whoa, we're dealing with an actor? No. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. So that's just right. This is a different i. Yes, it does not mean with complex numbers. Oh. That's right. So it's p, b, and j. It's the same p, b, and j. So what I want you guys to understand, though, is if I have a component form of a vector, we can write it by using i and j. Okay? And here's the way it's going to look like. v all right, can be the same thing as we can write this as component form as v1 times 1, 0 plus v2 times 0, 1. All right? So we can write, if I have a component form of a vector, you could say, oh, here's your vector, right? That's uh, 3, 4. I can also write it like this. Now, we know what is 1, 0. That's equal to i. And what is 0, 1? That's equal to j. So we can say v is equal to v1i plus v2j. So when you guys start seeing those formulas, or not the formulas, but the um, vector forms where it has the i and the j, all you need to understand is these are your component forms of your vectors, the v1 and v2. These are what we call your scalar multiples of your, of your vectors. Your v1 and your v2 are going to be your scalar multiples all right, of the i and j. All right? And that's it. There we go. That Done. Cool. No mas. A lot of information, though, isn't it? What next class period?